Cells and tissues in the ITEC syllabus are combined. There are five questions on cells and tissues. The Latin for cell is cyto. And the hospital department that specialises in looking at cells under a microscope is cytology. So we're going to discuss all of the organelles, the baby organs, within a generalised cell and do an introduction on cells in this presentation. And then we're going to follow on on a tissues presentation, which will be separate. The cell is the smallest, most basic unit of matter in the body. And as I said before, we're going to be talking about a generalised cell, but in this picture you can see some specific cells. Top left hand corner is a nerve cell. The top right hand corner you can see a picture of a white blood cell. Below that is the picture of the red blood cell. The little middle red one stretched cell is a muscle cell. Bottom left is the ovum or egg and in the middle at the bottom is a sperm. So there are different types of cells but we're going to discuss one generic cell with all the baby organs within it. What you need to understand is that the smallest particle of matter is an atom. These can't even be seen under a microscope, they're so small. And most living things are made up of hydrogen, carbon, oxygen. And that these atoms combine together to form a molecule. And our cells, or every living cell in our body, is made up of atoms and molecules as well. Our body has seven primary functions in order to keep it alive. And these are movement, excretion, respiration, reproduction, nutrition, growth, responding to um, a stimulus. Those seven primary functions keep us alive and our cells have to perform those seven primary functions as well. And although they don't have um, lungs and they don't have a digestive system like our bodies do, they still need to process oxygen and carbon dioxide and they need nourishment just like the stomach would do and the digestive system. So we're going to move on to what a cell is made up of. The cell membrane is the wall of the cell and its function is to keep everything inside, inside. So to stop the cytoplasm from running out of the cell and to keep the organelles which float in the cytoplasm and the nucleus within the cell. The cell walls are semi-permeable which means that like a sieve it will allow some things through the walls but other things that are too big are kept out. If you look at this picture of the cell membrane you can see that there are almost these gates, purple gates along the edge of the cell membrane and these allow the larger things into the cell that can't pass through the cell wall. The cell walls made of protein threads and lipids as well. And everything in the cell is kept inside by the cell membrane. ITEC require you to know how different substances pass through the cell wall into the other side. Every living cell requires oxygen and carbon dioxide. Oxygen is what keeps every single cell alive and as the oxygen is used up, a waste product is produced in the form of carbon dioxide. So diffusion is the method in which oxygen and carbon dioxide pass through the walls of the cell membrane. Usually, where there's an area of high concentration, it would move into an area of low concentration. Osmosis is the name of how water passes through the cell wall. 
filtration is water soluble substances. A good example of this would be um, in the kidneys where water soluble substances like salt, sodium filtrates through the kidneys and the kidneys filter the urine. Disillusion is a term given to how fats dissolve their way through the fatty layer of the cell membrane. So if you heat a knob of lard in a saucepan, it'll liquefy. And this is what happens on a cellular level as the fatty substances pass through the wall of the membrane. Up to now, these first four methods have just been passive. They are chemical. It happens automatically. When one side of the cell is of a higher concentration than the other. Active transport, however, requires piggybacking. Glucose, which are the sugars, and amino acids, which are the proteins, they almost have a taxi through the gate of the cell wall, and this requires some energy. And that's called active transport. You need to know the names of these five different methods and what travels in which way. ITEC would like you to understand terms like phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Phagocytosis is to do with our white blood cells. These are our army that go out and fight off infection, either invasion by a foreign body or infection by a bacteria or a virus. And they do this like, it's like a game of Pac-Man, where the mouth is engulfing the dots. The phagocytes engulf the bacteria or the foreign body and ingest it. Penocytosis is about the fluid. Everywhere in the body is bathed with water and fluid. And outside the cell, this is called interstitial fluid. This is fluid which is in between the tissues. And when the fluid comes from outside the cell, inside the cell, then that's known as penocytosis. I take want you to understand these two terms and attached next to this slide you'll find some useful, I hope, um, video footage from YouTube which are good examples of how this works. Probably a little bit more complicated than you need but you'll get the idea by the video. I think they're interesting. We're going to look at a generalized cell and it's a good idea at this stage if you draw the cell to help you remember it. So we have now discussed that the cell membrane holds everything in and inside the cell it's full of cytoplasm. That's the name of the jelly-like substance within a cell, cytoplasm. Within the cell you have lots of baby organelles. So these are baby organs within the cell. And we're going to talk about those throughout the rest of this presentation. We have the mitochondria, sausage-shaped cells at the top of the cell. Endoplasmic reticulum. Ribosomes. Lysosomes. Vacuole. Golgi apparatus, centrosome, centrioles, nucleus, nucleolus. These are the names of the organelles within the cell that you need to be familiar with. You need to be familiar with their name and what they do, briefly what they do. Everything within the cell wall floats in a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm. This substance is protoplasm and throughout the body we have lots of protoplasm but when it's within a cell it changes its name to cytoplasm and the cytoplasm jelly-like fluid is found between the cell wall and the nucleus. This is mainly a jelly-like fluid made up of 70 to 90% water and all the 
organelles float in it. It contains organic and inorganic salts, carbohydrates, lipids, um, amino acids, which are proteins. Carbohydrates are glucose. So these are floating around in the cytoplasm as they have just passed through the cell wall into the cell they'll be floating in the cytoplasm until they make up their mind where they're going what part of the cell they need to go to the mitochondria is a sausage shaped organelle floating around in the cytoplasm this is the powerhouse of the cell this is what provides energy to the cell and there are two chemicals in the body called adenosine diphosphate or ADP and adenosine triphosphate. These two chemicals are what are converted into energy and it's the mitochondria that converts these two chemicals into energy. It's a chemical reaction. All you need to know for your syllabus is that mitochondria is your powerhouse and that ADP and ATP are stripped chemicals which produce energy. There are a lot more mitochondria within a muscle cell because obviously muscles need an awful lot of energy to make us move. So the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell and they strip ADP and ATP in order to create energy. Within the cell, you have something called an endoplasmic reticulum. Now, a reticulum is a network, and this is like a labyrinth of canals and sacs that run throughout the cell. It takes up most of the cell, and this is how things circulate and move around the cell. None of the different contents that want to pass in and out the cell, the gases, the proteins, the lipids have legs. So they don't go walking from A to B, from one organelle to another. So they circulate and move around the cell through the endoplasmic reticulum. Now this reticulum has rough and smooth walls. And the smooth walls make it really fast. A bit like a ski slalom made of ice. The smoother it is, the faster things are going to move through it. Then you have rough reticulum. Now it's to the rough reticulum that is there to catch the ribosomes. As the ribosomes rush through the cell, circulating, moving through the cell, they get caught up on the rough walls of the endoplasmic reticulum. They're collected there, they're gathered there. So the endoplasmic reticulum, or the ER, it's sometimes called, this is the labyrinth of sacs and canals, like a maze through the cell, and it's all about circulation and movement. The ribosomes are a protein factory. Protein is for growth and repair. And ribosomes are made up of granules of RNA. Repeat after me. Ribonucleic acid. Ribonucleic acid or RNA is what the ribosomes are made of. And they produce protein. They are attached to the rough ER, endoplasmic reticulum. And they are collected by the Golgi apparatus, where they're then processed. So ribosomes are a protein factory for growth and repair made of ribonucleic acid. They look like little ribena in all the pictures. The lysosome is a, an organelle that produces digestive enzymes. It produces these so that they can break down dangerous materials that enter the cell. So every time a bacteria or a virus invades the cell, the lysosome's job is to break it down with enzymes. Also, 
any worn out organelles, the equivalent of our, you know, when we f buy a new fridge or a new washing machine, we do that with the organelles. We rebuild a new organelle when the old one's worn out. So the old organelles would be sent to the lysosome to be broken down by digestive juices. So it's a little bit like pouring bleach um, or acid over these organelles. They will break them down so that any waste products then can be taken to the vacuoles ready for getting rid of from the cell, so from evacuation from the cell really. A vacuole is a vacant space or dustbin, a storage for transportation of waste. Before we get rid of it, before it's evacuated from the cell, all of the ingested waste prior to excretion from the cell is stored here. So this is like a vacant lot, an empty space ready to be disposed of through the cell wall and evacuated. The Golgi apparatus is about processing proteins and it's, if you imagine Golgi, I like to think of him as a person, Golgi collects the ribosomes from the rough walls of the endoplasmic reticulum, he collects them up, he processes them, he packages them up ready to be transported wherever they need to go. That might be within the cell if the cell needs to create and repair more organelles or it might mean that they're packed up and shipped out of the cell to somewhere else that they're needed. So Golgi and his apparatus are processing the ribosomes which are collected for him to do that on the rough walls of the endoplasmic reticulum. These are processed, modified, sometimes released through the cell membrane, CM means cell membrane, out of the cell to another part of the body. But sometimes it's to somewhere within the cell that needs protein for growth and repair. The centrosomes is the name of the organelle that houses the centrioles. The centrioles are like asparagus, they're like rods, green rods, rod-like structures which are very important in the process of mitosis. Mitosis is the name for cell reproduction or division. It's asexual reproduction, it's how the cells replicate themselves. And the centrosomes and the centrioles are very involved in asexual reproduction. The nucleus is the control centre of the cell, it's the head office. It's full of protoplasm, but the protoplasm here is called nucleoplasm because it's within the nucleus. This is where we have chromosomes. Chromosomes are made up of strands of DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So say that after me deoxyribonucleic acid. This is what makes up our chromosomes and this is what carries our genetic blueprint. I'll tell you more about that on the next slide. But you do need to understand that the nucleus is the control centre, it's made up of the nucleoplasm and this is where you would find chromosomes and deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. Chromatin is a chemical that's needed for chromosome production. Chromosomes are composed of DNA. A chromosome, the word, comes from chroma and some. Chroma means colour and these DNA strands are very colourful and some is body. And apparently these chromosomes and their strands of DNA are what depict what species we are. As human beings we have 46 chromosomes that make up us as human beings. We have 23 from either parent. So 23 are found in the egg from our mother and 23 are found in the sperm of our father and when the two come together um, 
in sexual reproduction, that will give us 46 chromosomes which will make a, a baby. This depicts all the attributes that we might have as a person, our skin colour, hair colour, what type of diseases we're likely to suffer from. Everything that we are physically comes from our chromosomes. So the chromosomes are a blueprint or genetic history carried in our DNA. We all know that these days DNA can be detective in, detected in crime scenes and we can grow DNA in order to replace um, stem cells. So this is where they all come from. Within any living cell within our body, within the nucleus, we have our chromosomes which carry these DNA strands which carry all our blueprint of who we are and our history of our illnesses and our heredity, hereditary genes. The nucleolus inside the nucleus is where ribosomes are made. This is where the ribonucleic acid is made into ribosomes. So it's a small structure that makes ribosomes. And ribosomes, if you remember earlier, to recap, are made of protein. So they're protein factories. So the nucleolus' job within the nucleus is to produce ribosomes, which are made of RNA, ribonucleic acid. Mitosis is the name given for cell division. This is asexual reproduction. Not to be mistaken by meiosis, which is sexual reproduction involving a sperm and an ova, an egg. This is to do with cell division. When we are poorly, for instance, we have a lot of mitosis going on in the body with regard to the white blood cells. The white blood cells are our defense, defense mechanism or army and the mitotic growth and rate of reproduction of the white blood cells when we are ill increases enormously in order to increase our troops to go out and fight off bacteria and infection. So mitosis is about reproducing one cell and dividing it into two. And as we said earlier, the centrioles that house that are in the centrosomes are very important in the process of mitosis. This is a really complicated subject, but iTech only really need you to have an overview. We used to have to learn all the different phases of mitosis, but thankfully we don't have to now. We just have to have an overview of what mitosis is about and why it happens. So this is where one cell becomes two cells and the chromosomes split in order to replicate two completely new cells. In mitosis, the one cell disintegrates the nucleus, the nucleolus vanishes, and the initially the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell, and they are pulled apart into two different ends or poles, if you like, of the cell and they are divided. It's the centromere, which is the central part, like the little waist of the chromosomes that is pulled apart. And this ends up with half of the chromosomes in one part of the cell and the other half in the other part of the cell. And the outside of the cell dimples. And at the end of the mitosis process, we end up with two complete daughter cells. Mitosis is made up of four phases, and it's during these four phases, as you can see in this picture, you can see this cell division. The first phase is the prophase, and if you think of any prologue, it's always the beginning of a book. So prophase is the beginning phase. Second phase is metaphase, 
The third phase is anaphase and the fourth phase is telophase. To be quite honest, over the last five or six years, we've had mainly two questions on mitosis and that is one, what is mitosis? which is that it's asexual reproduction. And what is the fourth phase of mitosis, which is telophase, and in which phase are two completely identical daughter cells produced? That would be telophase. So I really feel these days that although there are four phases to mitosis, the last phase is the most important. And here we can have it, the fourth phase, telophase, where two new daughter cells are produced. I've attached what I think is a really good video um, clip next to this slide, which I think gives you quite a good understanding of the process of mitosis. And it is a very complicated subject, but we really do only need to know the bare bones of the process of mitosis. So have a look and hopefully it will clarify what I've been trying to explain.